Are you happy? Hi, my name is Eric Zollmer, and I want to talk to you about happiness, specifically your happiness or how you can become happier. But how can one be happy during a pandemic? Even resilient individuals feel out of sorts right now. So if you feel overwhelmed or anxious, it's absolutely normal during this confusing time of uncertainty. It's not your fault, but it is your problem. The critical question is, what are you gonna do about it? How do you spring forward and not fall back? How do you get comfy during uncomfortable times? And what psychological first aid is there proven coronavirus busters that can build up our resiliency and indirectly boost our immune system. Well, pull up a chair, get some buttered popcorn, put another log on the fire, and let's get cozy and talk about what should be in your toolbox of happiness. Well, let's start at the beginning at least at the beginning of our country. It was here at 7th and Market Street in Philadelphia in June of 1776 that Thomas Jefferson rented a room in the Graf House together with his enslaved servant to write a draft of the Declaration of Independence. In it, he wrote the now famous words that every American has the basic right to the pursuit of happiness. Now, what did Jefferson mean with that? Did he mean that every American has the right to pursue wealth and property, the American dream, so to speak, to go from poor to prosperous, or that Jefferson have something more complex in mind, happiness as the expression of freedom. Will Smith, the famous Philadelphian philosopher, put it this way, we thought Jefferson was kind of slick by putting the pursuit into the pursuit of happiness because the pursuit puts it back on you. I agree with Will Smith. I think to us Americans, it's the pursuit that matters. Jefferson taught us an important lesson, that happiness is not a place, it's a direction. Next, we became obsessed with being happy. Happiness became part of our culture. We eat Happy Meals. We splash ourselves with a cologne called, you guessed it, happy. A drug was created called ecstasy, stamped, of course, with a happy face. We drink orange juice that smiles back at you. Have a happy day. Don't worry, be happy became a number one music hit. And of course, we use the great modern icon, the smiling yellow face, every day in our social media. Today we are being told to just be happy, on command. But as a nation, we only rank 14th in the world in happiness. Norway, Iceland, and Denmark are the top three. As Americans, we are getting wealthier, but we are becoming unhappier. One of the first psychologists to focus attention on happiness was Abraham Maslow. Up until then, psychologists have mostly studied what can go wrong with humans, not what could go right. Maslow created a model of happiness with physiological needs such as satisfying hunger, thirst, sleep, and sex at the bottom. Mind you, during COVID-19, our basic needs have been replaced with finding toilet paper and having reliable Wi-Fi. But you get the point. Maslow also suggested there are higher, more complex forms of happiness. The need for friendship, family, work, and love. So Maslow argued 
that it's a different type of happiness to get a promotion compared to eating a pint of vanilla ice cream. The most aspirational form of happiness represented at the very top of this pyramid, he suggested, was to be at peace with yourself and others. But only few people would get there, he argued. From Maslow, we learned an important lesson, namely that happiness is a sprint, but finding meaning in life is a marathon. As a neuropsychologist, I can't help but wonder where exactly happiness is located in the brain. Well, let's take a look. If you think of the brain as an old house with many different additions that have been added over time, the oldest part of that house would be the basement or the brainstem. I'm not sure you actually want to go down there. It's a pretty dark place of humanity. The underworld, the Greeks called it. As you move to newer structures in your brain house, you pass through the first floor, the emotional brain called the limbic system, where there is substantial neuronal mass and the connectivity dedicated to happiness in the forms of memories, feelings, and mood. Next is the second floor, the complex neuronal architecture of the cortex, where much of happiness is being processed. The evolutionary most recent addition is the penthouse, your frontal lobes, the conductor of the brain. And here resides your ability to choose. Thomas Jefferson's pursuit, you see, would be located in our frontal lobes. From neuroscience, we know that there's not one, but many different forms of happiness centers in the brain. In fact, happiness and sadness are both activated by several large complex neuronal networks. That is why you can't be happy and sad at the same time. Most importantly, our brains allow us to be aware of how happy or unhappy we are. Let's see what happened if we superimpose my brain model of happiness with Maslow's psychological happiness model. Voila! Their more basic forms of happiness are clearly neurologically hardwired, and the more complex forms of happiness, they are in the gray matter of the brain. They have to be earned. So can happiness be bought? Let's see. Well, yes and no. You can buy food, a security alarm. Many people are buying guns right now. But like the Beatles said, money can't buy you love. Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist and concentration camp survivor, suggested that when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. How many of you have, during COVID-19, started connecting closer with family members, started taking pleasure in cooking, gardening, and exercising, and yes, adopting a pet? We may not have a medical vaccine or cure for COVID-19, but we do have a psychological vaccine and cure for the mental health fallout. I call it psychological first aid. The not-so-secret ingredient is resiliency, which enables people to actually grow through adversity. But how does one become more resilient? Here are five areas you can immediately work on. The first and easiest is physical, that is, start taking control of your life by exercising, sleeping more, eating better, and engaging in self-care. It's relatively easy and you will feel and look great. Next, start thinking better and you will feel better. Spend time problem solving your way out of this crisis. Focus on achievable goals. Be cautiously optimistic by flipping the script from there is no way to I will find a way. Engage in creative thinking. Don't worry about what you can't control. Basketball player Michael Jordan said, 
I can't worry about a shot that I have not taken. And so it is with COVID-19. And make sure to schedule your day. Social isolation is inherently uncomfortable. And so now more than ever, it's important to over communicate and to nurture and strengthen your social support network. If there was ever a reason to have social media, it was because of COVID-19. Emotionally, become more honest with yourself and be self-aware of the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life. Be grateful and help others in need. And how we like to say in sports, trust the process. Finally, at the top of the mountain, now is a good time to nurture core spiritual strength within yourself, to find peace with yourself and others, to move some things that have bothered you for a very long time over the finish line, and accept that there are things in life we can't explain and that this mystery is beautiful. You can play golf. It's physical. It's great exercise. It's social, you're with your friends. Cognitive, you have to think your way around. It's emotional, competitive, and quite frankly, out here, it's spiritual happiness. Of course, if you have persistent symptoms of loneliness and depression, you should consult with your family physician. This psychological first aid kit is so important because when we do put the coronavirus behind us in the rear view mirror, we want to make sure we feel good about ourselves, that post-corona, we will successfully reintegrate and be happy. Thank you for your attention. It's been a great pleasure. As I stand here in front of this amazing sculpture at Penn's Landing in Philadelphia, symbolizing the arrival of millions of immigrants to come to this country to pursue their happiness, I can't help but think that COVID-19 also presents an opportunity for us to re-examine our lives and to perhaps find happiness in unexpected ways. Remember, happiness is not a place, it's a direction, and it's the pursuit of the happiness that matters most. Thank you. You know where to find me above the tree line on my pursuit to the summit of happiness. Thank you.